Hey guys, WaifuGate here. So today we'll be going over another deck guide. This time it'll be on Tamir Flash slash Reclamation. So this list was a little popular um, a bit before the Red Bull qualifier. Um, Crow Keys and Danny T were both working on this list a lot, trying to lock down on the uh, Jeskai Yorian meta. This deck is sort of built and catered to trying to fight that deck. Um, the Jeskai Yorian is still kind of a rough matchup with this list anyway. Um, but it's still a fun list to play. And if you don't have to spend like a lot of wild cards on this, like a lot of these cards are like old reclamation cards anyway. You know, Brazen Borrower, um, Dispute, um, Uro's kind of new. And then the only other new card you have is Shark Typhoon. It's pretty safe craft and then the, like the land. So it's not too bad on the budget. Like if you already have some of the stuff built. Um, and then Sideboard is catered to like aggro mostly. Um, I think there might be a Sideboard guide um, on Aether Hub for this. If there's not, just ping me on stream. Um, I'll make one on the spot the best I can. Um, so far, I've just been winging it, and it's a pretty strong deck. It's like against aggro, you know, just kind of bring in your Flame Sweep, Storm's Wrath. So, like, it's not too, too hard um, in regards to countering stuff. Um, in regards to the sideboard, you know, control, bring in some neutralizes, extra counter spells. So, the reason why we're not running Growth Spiral is because of our boy uh, or girl, Kyrega, here. Um, so this says that you can't have anything with a converted mana cost of um, uh, less than three, basically, or converted mana cost three or greater. It has to be and lands. It's also why we're running like three disputes. We can kind of cheat some of these into play to have earlier game plays, because if we were doing absolutely nothing before turn two, it would be very tough. So we do the same thing that like Jeskai Fires does with Kyrega, which is we run Bone Crushers and Brazens for the most part. Not sure if Fires really runs Brazens, but I think that they might nowadays um, with the changes with Kyrega. So you basically just early game play, removal, bounce for tempo if you need to, um, play this as a three drop, hold up a counter spell if you need to, like a dispute for three mana is, is fine. This is just sort of the general play style of the deck. And then you eventually want to develop Wilderness, of course, during a safe turn. Uh, get that night pack ambusher going. So you'll notice that we have a lot of creatures, a lot of threats, like Shark Typhoon can win the game. Only running three expansions. I've actually got to ask Crokies or ask Danny T about this to see the reasoning behind this or Sidetrack, because Sidetrack um, is bad. Another dude on Twitch, awesome dude. Um, the do co-streams with them from time to time. They recommend, like, they piloted this list to Mythic. Uh, Sidetrack did, so it's like... The deck obviously works, I just don't know why this is at 3, per se. Um, I've gotten a few reps with the decks, but I'm not like the best pilot for it. I just enjoyed it, and I figured it's a nice deck to sort of uh, show people, and then if they're interested in it, they can like really bite down and, and get the ins and outs of the decks, you know? Because that's, that's what these deck guides are kind of here for. All right, so that's pretty much that. I would say like bad matchups are aggro kind of game one, but after the sideboarding, it's like probably like 70, 80 percent. Like it's probably not too bad. And you get a pretty good shot of winning first game if you get some night packs down, or you can kind of control the game with Bone Crusher stuff like that. Not too bad. Um, other bad matchups, I would say like. You White Yorian is probably your worst matchup almost because of Teferi, and they can just battle and fight over counter spells and we don't have access to some of our really good ones versus control like negate because we can't run it because of kurega there's some merit to running negate sideboard anyway and forsaking kurega like game um games two and three if we really need to but like so far it hasn't been like necessary you pretty much just hope that you have the dispute for teferi or that you can bounce it with brazen and then counter it on the way back down um other than that, you just kind of wing it and uh, and figure it out with, with control for the most part. But anything that runs Teferi is going to be very difficult because if they resolve that card, it's just, it's over, man. Like, it's really, really tough to come back from that, even with Bone Crusher expansions. Narsets are also rough. I mean, Shark Typhoon definitely makes that better, but sometimes, even with a 60-card list, you don't get Shark Typhoon. And uh, meanwhile, you know, Yorian decks with 80 cards... Man, two Shark Typhoons, easy every game, right? It's, it's always greener on the other side, as they say. But all of that aside, uh, other big meta decks, Cycling, I think we do okay against. Um, they can kind of get a little bit out of hand if we can't hold a counter spell up for Zenith Flare. 
Um, and Zenith Flare is an instant, so it's a bit tricky. Like they can wait for us to tap out for a Night Pack Ambusher, shoot the Ambusher, shoot us, etc. with the Zenith Flare, so that's pretty tough. Um, but we do have Clothies um, for uh, Zenith Flare, which is pretty interesting. Like we can just keep eating stuff. I'm not sure if that's the greatest sideboard card for it, but I think it's fine. Um, and then we've got two neutralizes, which is pretty nice because we're not allowed to run like fun cards like Soul Guide Lantern that's really good against um, Cycle, right? Because we were uh, getting limited by Curega, but we do have other options that are pretty good. So, and then like Ceratops can come in to try to race like Yorianless and to dodge to Fairy Bounces and such, which is pretty nice. Um, what other big lists are there? Like Sakdos is pretty much the same as um, as like uh, Aggro. Like that kind of throws itself into that category. And we have a good matchup there, like for the most part. Like it's not terrible. We just bring in Clothies to eat their graveyard um, and gain life, which is huge. And then they just can't wear us anything back. Or if they have Obosh, it's fine too. Like we just have to counter Obosh because otherwise the 3 5 body is very hard to deal with. We have to have like Nightpack Ambusher not get killed by something. Um, and then to produce tokens to eventually block their tokens and such. And then we have to... Uh... So a big part about this deck, something to consider when you're playing. Um, turn these off. Uh, mostly the triggered abilities, um, I would say. Because you're able to... Um, have Nightpack Ambusher's token come up before you untap your mana for wilderness reclamation and that's huge because then when you go to cast expansion and explosion at the end of your turn you've already gotten your wolf which is nice because if you're not winning the game instantly with the expansion that's like pretty relevant like if you're going to hit a creature with it so that's something to consider when you're playing that this deck specifically and a lot of decks it's just good to have that off for the most part slows down the game a little bit but it's it's pretty worth it i think um what else? I think that's pretty much it. That's like the ins and the outs. Uh, detailed sideboard guide soon. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to throw them down into the comments below. Stop by my stream, ask me stuff. Uh, we're also going to go into the gameplay here in just a second. Um, so if you guys want some gameplay, I got you. But um, hopefully you guys enjoy that. And I'll uh, see you guys for um, the next video. All right, so this is game three out of like three, obviously, because it's best of three. But this is this is best of three. Um, I believe that we won the first game and then the second game was kind of close, but they ended up uh, just barely squeaking by. Um, so we're just going to be going over the game here. So I keep a pretty it's kind of a questionable hand, but with me drawing a card, um, it wasn't too bad. So I pick up an extra land, which is awesome. We got Clothies here from the sideboard. Uh, pretty good tech just to eat away their graveyard so they don't get to Uro and stuff. Um, I believe they're on Bant Yorian right now. So that's what we're up against. So we're just sitting here holding up the uh, Brazen Borrower slash Dispute here. Felt like it wasn't really worth playing the tap land. Because um, if I need to use three mana, I can just use the three mana anyway. Um, so that's not too terrible. I'd really like to have like an omen of the sea at this point. But like, you know, you can't always pick and choose your hand. Like you can kind of um do it to a point, but you can't just mulligan hands because they're not perfect. So we pay three life here. Um I think I actually get stuck on lands here, but I can't remember. Um this is me looking at a VOD from Twitch, basically. Um that's what we're doing right now. I'm recommentating because of copyright stuff music wise on my stream. So this is typically the uh, the go to with the deck guides. So they've seemed to have developed two omens and play a tap land. So end of turn, I just try to flash in brazen, and I think they dispute it. I believe is what goes down. Yep, 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 yep. That's fine. Uh, so we do pick up the land, thankfully. And here I just try to see, you know, like, you know the, there's a chance that they have um, a negate or a veto, but they already used a dispute, so they can't pay the full three mana to dispute my thing again. So if if we resolve the wilderness here, it's huge. You can see that I set the end stop there. I was on the tips, tips and tricks, uh, another YouTube video. 
Like, so you can use Wilderness Reclamation without getting boned, basically. Uh, that way you can float your mana out where so you can do something end of turn. So I guess I just pass here. Um, instead of developing Wilderness and taking a risk on a veto, like, just wrecking us. This also allows them to, like, Mystical Dispute a Wolf end of turn, though, which feels kind of bad. Um, but I think if I remember correctly at this point, at the end of their turn, they don't have any blue mana left over, basically. I think is what goes on. I think I might try to jam another Brazen, or I, I, I think I just jam the... Um, quite sure I just jam the, uh, the Night Pack here, end of turn. Just waiting on the opponent. There we go. So Uro. I'm thinking about casting my Night Pack Ambusher, but realize that they could jam in a Teferi, like if they have the third land there, like that. So they do get slightly ahead on land here, which is fine. Like, there's nothing we can do about it, right? It's, it's done. So. And then they Narset. So we don't really care about this. We're like, oh, there we are. There's some loot explosions. Perfect. I think that was a sub. <laughs> sub or the follow. So we see that they not minus two in our set through the uh, emotes and flames there. So they get to shatter the sky, which is a little foreshadowing for our friend, the Night Pack Ambusher, but we'll see what happens. So here, not only do they tap out to give us wilderness, but they're also saying it's okay for us to have Night Pack Ambusher end of turn, which is pretty brutal. Like, that's not an easy situation to deal with. Because now we basically have double the mana, you know? Because we get to tap out during our main phase, and then we can tap out during end step. Or tap out during end step and still get there. So here I'm trying to decide how worth it is to make them tap out versus... Uh, just hard countering here. I don't think they have another counter spell at this juncture, though. I think they just kind of, like, pass, yeah. So that's pretty huge for us. Because now they, like, want to tap out again, but they can't. So we get another Night Pack Ambusher. Which, you know, honestly, I'd almost rather have a land. Like, because staying ahead on lands is so important. And missing land drops just feels bad. So I think here, I just float the mana. I'm like trying to decide what to do here, but I think what I do is I set the end step, and then I float the mana for Wolf. Or no, I just jam in Clothies. Oh yeah, that's huge. If they don't have a counter spell for that, which they don't. I remember resolving this, I'm pretty sure. Oh, they gust. And then I think I just dispute here. Easy dispute. And they can't pay for it. And that dispute's getting less and less valuable, you know, as the game goes on, because they'll have the mana eventually uh, to pay for that. So now we don't really need the end step stop there. So now we either get extra mana from them by exiling something, we get to deal damage, gain life. And the dealing damage is really important. And the thing is, like, they have to ECD that. And to do that, they, like, have to get through the counter spells that they don't know that I don't have, you know? which is super big. So they just escape Uro, which is pretty weak to our Brazen Bounce, honestly. I'm pretty sure I just jam in second wolf here, though. Maybe. Hmm. I think I might just bounce with Brazen. Second wolf there is interesting, but it also plays into Shatter quite heavily. Nice. Vantress is like the best land, too. So we just check out our opponent's graveyard. We check out our own. So now we get extra land. I think I, yeah, I just play Cure Egg to draw here. Because why not? It's like a little wheat to Gus, but not really. And I set the stop. Even if I'm not going to use that, I try to set the stop anyway, just so I have that good habit built up. And Clothies is actually putting in a ton of damage here. She's actually really, really good for the sideboard because Kyrega has two green. So, like, it's just so easy to get her devotion up, her devotion numbers. So now, even if they shatter, we say okay, right? Like, we don't really care that much. 
And then we just flash in a night pack ambusher because we have two of them. So Shark Typhoon for zero, which feels terrible for the opponent, but they have to to try to draw cards, draw answers. Otherwise, they're just not getting there. Like, because they have to answer multiple things. Like, first thing they have to do is, like, shatter to get rid of, you know, nine power on the table. Potentially more if we don't cast anything and night pack Ambusher starts pumping out uh, wolves. So we just say okay, and we draw a card from this, which is just good. It's insane. We pick up another land, it's fine. Remember I was talking about lands before. And all the while, this they're at 12, right? And now they have to deal with like Clothies pinging for another two, and they can gust this. I think they gust it, and I decide to put it on bottom. Because I don't really need that. Like, I don't even know if I'm casting this Night Pack Ambusher. And that pretty much seals the deal on the game, I feel. Like, since they weren't able to develop Teferi earlier. And they're struggling with a with an 80 card pile, right? That's just how the, um... That's just how the, um... How the Yorian is sometimes. Like, you just get hosed with those, those pockets of uh, not having your best card, best card, best card. And it happens with, like, non... Yorian lists as well. So we keep best card, best card here, I think. I'm pretty sure. Pretty good. I think I just flash in Brazen here or I just let it go. I can't remember what I do. I think I just let it go after considering how much mana it's going to be. Oh, just Brazen then. Because that's a nice little threat, right? And it floats the mana perfectly. Like floating the mana, I mean like we use all of our mana that we would have floated with Wilderness, untapped with, and then it's just perfect, you know? It's good. We let Uro go, I'm pretty sure, here. Because we can just eat him now. Because they don't have enough to bring back Uro because they just did that last turn. So it's not really a big deal. And, like, they can Yori in here, and that's about it. Like, they can Yori in to try to draw... See if they can get that get that last counter spell out of me before they need to board wipe again. Probably is what they want to do. They just uro again, which we just don't care about. Like they can do that all day and all night. I'm pretty sure they just tap out all the way for me here. I think they gust the uh, night pack ambusher. I believe. Oh no, they try to get last casket. Oh, that's hilarious. That's why they get blown out. And then we have Expansion Explosion, which is uh, exact lethal, I believe. Oh, wow. Yeah, we super blow them out with that. And then we Night Pack. Yep. Oh, yeah. Now I remember. It's all coming back to me now. So that deals damage, heals us. And then I just do the math here. Like, to see if I even need to shock this in or not. Even though it doesn't matter. Like, good job, Waifu Gate. I mean, it's good to check the math, I guess. But. It's like, they're super dead. Like, with or without shocking, I'm pretty sure. We just swing through. Seven, four. Yeah, we have more than enough. And we... We could have uh, ordered that right. So that's something to keep into consideration, too. Is... Um, I'll probably make a video on that, like tips and tricks, number week number two. Probably write that down in a second, but um, just knowing how to order your triggers, there's like options that you can go into in the game. So if you haven't already done that, highly recommend it. I don't even know why I'm doing this for max damage. Just to just to practice like being able to count with the deck. I think is the main. Oh, I had way more than enough. I didn't even need to swing. I don't think with double wilderness. I just have this grin on the on the VOD, it's just ridiculous. But yeah, so that was that was gameplay for for best of three. So hopefully this deck guide was helpful. Usually I do um at least one of these a week, usually two or three to fill out content. And pretty soon I'll be doing articles that go alongside them, like ones that we really like. So if you like that content, um, there's actually a playlist for deck guides that are all updated and such. Like updated as in like Ikoria, um, deck guides basically i'm pretty sure those are the only ones on the playlist right now so stuff that's pretty relevant um and yeah so if you enjoyed the video feel free to like and subscribe all of that good stuff 
And I've been putting out a YouTube video a day for a while now. So hopefully we can just keep that up and I will catch you guys um, on the next video.